In hair restoration surgery, the harvest of the strip scar is the most invasive part of the surgical procedure. And this is the um, part which patients um, are the most concerned with preoperatively. Some physicians um, in their discussions with patients will relate the size and width of donor scars um, directly with the width of the, the strip that has been removed. Um, this is an overly simplistic view of the, um, of the cause of scarring and, and may unfortunately mislead patients on some occasions. Patients frequently ask how it is that we are able to harvest such relatively large strips from our patient's donor area. The answer is really quite simple. Um, there are a few surgical techniques that can be easily learned um, which make it possible to um, reduce the overall tension on the wound and still give an excellent donor scar. The first technique would be um, to vary the width of the donor um, ellipse um, with the varying parts of the scalp. If, if we are to kind of look at the laxity as we go around the scalp, we'll find that the laxity is highest on the sides, tightest over the mastoid processes just behind the sides, and again loosens up posteriorly at the back of the scalp. So if we harvest our strip with maximum width at the sides, narrowing down considerably over the mastoid processes, and then widening again over the occipital area, we can excise a much larger strip than if we used a uniform width strip all along. In fact, if someone was to harvest a uniform strip smaller than the varying width strip that we harvest, you can in fact get a, a worse resulting donor scar. And the, re the reason for this is that when you vary the width of the strip on different areas of the scalp, upon closure you'll get an even tension all the way along the scar. If, if someone would say just take a uniform width strip and not vary it with the varying areas of the scalp, what happens is the areas which are the tightest, just above the mastoid processes, the wound there is under a lot more tension than the adjacent areas which carry no tension at all. To make it more easy to understand, by varying the width of the strip as we go around the scalp, we can actually get a uniform tension closure throughout the length of the scar. This is the most desirable type of closure where every part of the wound bears the same amount of tension and there are no areas with no tension and there are no areas with high tension just a uniform tension all the way along the scalp. There is a second technique that we use when we excise the donor scalp. The skin of the scalp is uh, tightly adherent to a fibrous layer which run, runs just below the surface of the skin. This adherence to the fibrous layer reduces the elasticity of the overlying scalp skin. So if we carefully lift off the skin from the underlying tough membrane, which is actually known as the gallia, we are able to stretch the skin considerably more with a lower tension closure than if the skin and the underlying membrane were closed in a single layer without first separating the two from each other. With routine use and um, practice of these techniques, doctors will find that they will be able to increase the width of the donor scar spice in some cases a hundred percent and get just as good if not better donor scars. In fact at our clinic at this point in time we are able to do mega sessions of five or six thousand grafts and achieve the same if not better scars than we were able to achieve eight years ago with surgeries of 1,000 to 1,500 grafts.